Welcome back to the channel, folks. Today I am going to show you my new 12,000 XP from EG4. I will go over the connections, I will go over the specs, and I will give you a brief overview of some of the things I like and dislike about it. So stick around. I will have links to this stuff down below for Signature Solar. If you use my coupon code, it's KMJ50, which will give you $50 off at your checkout on orders over $500. And that is on top of any sales or deals they have going on. So please, if you wanna support the channel, that's one way you can do it. I also have some Amazon links down below for some other products I've used, uh, things I've used for hooking this up. So anything down there helps, I appreciate it, thank you. This is the EG4 12,000 XP off-grid inverter. It has a 12,000 watt, by the name, 12,000 watt continuous output and an 18,000 watt surge for about five seconds. It can handle 24,000 watts of solar and it can actually be over paneled up to 28,000 watts of solar. So that way, I mean, obviously we know the rating on the, the panels is not always 100% of what we're gonna get all the time. So if you over panel it up to 28,000, that way the usable power coming out of your panels to the inverter will be much closer to that 24,000 mark and actually max it right out and get full potential out of it. So on the solar side, there is two MPPT controllers in here and each one of them is rated at 35 amps and upwards of 480 volt. There's a few inverters out there that are higher than that, like the 18K and 12K PV. Those are, I think, 600 volts each. The amperage is cool uh, that you can take that much power. It has two sets of terminals for each MPPT. So there's actually four sets of terminals in here for four strings of solar. Uh, right now I have two strings on it. I have a string of 12 panels and I have a string of four panels. And I put them each separately on their own MPPT because they're different sizes. And that is actually beneficial because being their separate strings of different sizes, each MPPT can, can get the most out of each string. This does have a five-year warranty on it. The app is very good. There is room for improvement, but for what you get out of it, you can do a lot of the remote uh, settings on there, which is super convenient. Uh, that makes it so much easier. Uh, the Wi-Fi dongle is on the side over here. That allows you remote access to the app and a desktop website as well to get into your controller. Um, also with that is you can get remote support from EG4. They can look right at your controller over the web and they can look at your settings, see what you have, like if you have any errors or faults or settings that are different than what they should be. Uh, it's very helpful. Uh, I actually did have to call them. I had this installed for about a week. I came home one day and I just fired the microwave and it kicked out the inverter on overload. So I'm like, well, that was kind of strange. I came out here, looked at it. Yep, that's what the fault said, overload. Let it reset after a few minutes. It powered back up. I let it sit for about a minute. I only had, I think it was like six or 700 watts of draw on it at the time. And I fired up the microwave again and it just kicked out. I did try this like three or four different times. So I jumped on the phone, called Signature Solar. They were able to remote into it. They took a look at some of my settings. Uh, they noticed my firmware was not up to date. So I had them go ahead and dump the new firmware on there. And lo and behold, I power cycled it after I got the new firmware on and it's been a champ ever since. But that was the only hiccup. It lasted an hour. I had Signature Solar and they're great customer service. Uh, they were right there. They, I believe it was Peyton jumped on and he was able to help me out, get my firmware updated over, over the web and back up and running in no time. So cheers to them. That is the coolest thing ever to have a company that you can buy stuff from that has that good of customer support that fast. I mean, talk to a person, they got it resolved right away. I'm not saying everything is going to be like that, but 
they were able to take care of it for me right away. It was a simple firmware update. So cheers to them. Thank you, Signature Solar, for the great customer support. So moving on, some more of the features. Uh, you can use grid power on here. You can tie your grid into this if you had a separate panel. I do not have that right now because my 12,000 powering my entire house panel right now. Uh, I'd have the main breaker shut off and I have a breaker back feeding into my main panel that's been powering my house for close to two months now. So, uh, so this does have the grid power. It does have a smart load breaker on here as well uh, that, uh, that will turn on with various settings in your app uh, to turn on certain battery levels or certain solar input coming in. You could use that to power some other non-critical loads, EV chargers, maybe sprinkler system. It does have a generator input as well. So you can run a large 240 volt generator to power back feed into this and then it'll use it to charge the batteries or run the loads depending on which is greater. It has your solar disconnect on the side, it has your smart load breaker, your main load breaker, your battery breaker, Wi-Fi dongle, output switches on this side which turns on your, your load. The main power switch is on this side of all your fan intakes on this side. Display on here is pretty nice. It's uh, similar to the 6000s, but it's, it seems like the buttons are a lot better. It's a little more responsive. Uh, next, I'm gonna show you all the connections in here and explain what they are, what they're for. All right, here is a close up of all your connections for the 12,000. Over on the left hand side here, we have your battery connections, your positive and your negative. They do come with these big lugs and I removed them with the bolt up top, existing bolt, bolt them on there. Your battery breaker is here. This is your battery communication cable. This goes down to right below it to the wall mount battery. Down below that you have your dry contacts they call them. And some of these are for your rapid shutdown. Uh, there is your power source for your rapid shutdown and then these are dry contacts which would run to your generator to turn it on and off or anything else you'd want to turn on and off. This here is your smart load breaker. You can see I have nothing hooked to it because I don't have anything I need to because I'm running my entire house off the load. This is your load breaker. This is a 100 amp load breaker here. I have these two gauge wires tied into my main panel on this side. Behind that is your neutral bar. And then over here is your earth ground or your chassis ground, uh, whatever you want to call it, I guess. Over here you have your generator inputs. So that would be in conjunction with your dry contacts. You can have the generator feed in 240 volts. It will use that to either power your loads or if your input is, let's say, 7,000 watts from your generator, and your house is only pulling a thousand watts, it'll use 6,000 of those watts to charge your batteries. Next over here, we have your grid tie. This would be a grid input. Same thing there, uh, you would feed in from the grid power to here, and you can schedule that to turn on and off at certain times. You can have that um, charge your batteries at certain times or certain levels of the battery. and. Yeah, there's a lot of configuring you can do with that. It's a very handy feature if you're able to do that with your system. Next over here is your solar inputs. There is two sets of inputs for each MPPT, one and two. And you can see those on the app uh, separately. You can set them up to run as one big MPPT charger or two separate ones independently. I have mine set up as independent two different size strings. I have a smaller string out there of four panels and I have a larger string of eight panels in series. So solar panel disconnect or your PV disconnect here. So there you have it. Let's jump back into some more features. Why did I choose the 12,000? And as you know on my channel, I had the 6,000 in here before. Why didn't I just get another one of those? Uh, it did cross my mind. It definitely did. And that was actually my plan until this one came out and I talked to tech support down at Signature Solar and asked them about the difference. I'm like, well, I would like to just 
parallel to 6000s. That way it's kind of a redundant backup. If one happens to fail or something happens to it, I'd have another one that I could just, you know, lower my consumption and I could still run critical loads in the house. They convinced me to get the 12,000 because of the much greater solar input, the higher surge capacity, smaller package. I got this here instead of having to take up two for two 6,000s. Uh, and the other reason, I did have a second reason, which was I'm building a new house and a new barn on the property we bought. So you'll be seeing videos on that coming out soon as well too. With the 6,000, I can put that in my barn and just have that dedicated to the barn with one of the wall mount batteries because the barn only needs lights, basically. Uh, in the winter time, we have high efficiency water heaters uh, to keep water for the animals out there. The one set up, it'll have its own panels on the barn roof. Everything will be self-contained in the barn. So that'll be more than enough. Then I have the 12,000 XP just for the house and my additional uh, shipping container shed. So that was my theory behind everything. I have three of the wall mount batteries I'll be putting with the 12,000 in the new house. And then I'll have one of the wall mount batteries with the 6,000 in the barn. I love this thing. It's been rock solid. I've put tons of power through it. I have over 750,000 watts of solar charging through it over 500,000 watts of consumption that's put out into my house. I've never had it kick out an overload except for when I had the firmware. That was the only time. And yeah, it's uh, it's been a great, great inverter and I'm looking forward to many, many years of service with this thing. So stick around. I will show you more in the next video of some of the loads I put it through. I'll show you screenshots, overviews, things I like, what I've run with it, what I've, um, how much I run at one time. Well, I hope you got something out of this video. Thank you for watching. Um, stick around, there's more. I'm trying to do some more updates here. I'm gonna be very busy this summer with uh, the new house barn build. So I'll try and get them out as much as I can. I know it's been a little while since I've got this last video out. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Here we go again with another video. Hopefully everything looks good. Fans are on.